Hello, everybody. Welcome back once again. Wednesday night edition of Inside the Headset. We're live and on the air, and we're going to roll over to Memphis. Going to talk to my good friend for the Christian Bur- Brothers Purple Wave, Head Coach Thomas McDaniel. How you doing tonight, Coach? I'm doing great, Stork. You? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I just, but just got a little bottled up there. I was just trying to get it all out. Uh, uh, great Friday, last Friday night for you and the Purple Wave as uh, you came away a big winner, 35-7. Uh, to 7. Uh, Take us through it a little bit, Coach. Well, uh, it was just one of those games where everything went our way. Uh, you know, Central is a good football team. Uh, it's one of the – I think it's one of the oldest uh, rivalries in the city of Memphis uh, – played at Crump Stadium. I don't know how much you know about Crump Stadium, but it, you know, uh, has a lot of history. A lot of college football games uh, were played there in the early days. Really? And, yeah, oh, yeah, it's cool. You'd love it if you looked it up. But anyway, uh, it's uh, got a lot of history, a lot of nostalgia, and uh, uh, Coach Wright does a great job there. Got a lot of good players. But we just uh, – Started fast. Everything went our way early, especially in the first quarter. It was twenty-one to nothing, and, and uh, you know, it kind of snowballed on a, uh, a little bit there. But uh, kids played well. Good win for us. Came away healthy, and uh, you know, finishing up with the regular season with the region opponent and celebrating our seniors. So, uh, it sounds to me like the allergy season's treating you really well, Coach. No, man, I've had a uh, a sinus infection going on probably like six weeks. I don't know what the hell's going on, but uh, I've stayed sick, and uh, tis the season, and it's, uh, I don't know, like, I think it would be interesting to find out, uh, like, if I did a full-body physical or whatever on myself in, uh, you know, 4th of July, and what, what the football season does to a man, uh, the toll it takes, but... Uh, it's uh it's interesting man i mean it's uh, a lot of long long days as you know and not a lot of sleep uh i'd like to say you get to catch up some on the weekends but that's not really true and uh you know it, it wears on you so i've been battling a sinus infection or something for head cold for uh damn near a month to be honest and it just i mean it is what it is you just got to keep it moving you know, and a lot of people say that, but, you know, at times, and, and you never get tired of the, of, of the game, and you never get tired of what you're doing if you're involved in this in this con, contraption, as I call it, high school football, regardless of, of where you are fitting in, whether you're doing what I'm doing or you're doing what, you, of course, you sink a lot more hours into it than I ever imagined or dreamed of, but... Uh, you know, but uh, one thing about it is, you know, as it goes on and everything, uh, people just at times, they really truly have no idea all the ins and outs and all the things you learn about the families, the kids, and it is, uh, and about the game and about other teams and new friendships. It's just a, it is a complete fast train ride that once it starts and then all of a sudden you blink and we're at week 10 and you know, it just happens that fast. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I don't know if I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I know that I've been so blessed that my wife has been with me since, uh, after my first year at Riverdale in 2001 is when I met her. So she's been with me for, you know, 21 of the 22 years that I've been coaching. Isn't that great? And, Isn't that great? I mean, that's just – Yeah, I'm, I'm, su- I mean, I'm super lucky because uh, she knew uh, what she was getting into, and uh, she saw it firsthand because I uh, – you know, we, we were we were together for five years before we got married, and I, I, just, I always said you don't really know someone until you've been with them for five years. So I slow played that for a long time, and uh, it, it – uh, but it really was, part of it was, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure. I just knew that uh, the investment uh, that it was going to cause for me, it really, uh, yeah, she she uh, she was with me. Uh, we got married right before my first head coaching job. And so she's just, she's been there, seen it, done that, knows that uh, it's, uh, you know, 4th of July uh, is a great time. Uh, it, but uh, she knows after that that she's not going to see me very much, and it's difficult. You know, i got two young kids at home, 
And uh, I find it funny. I think there's a lot of people that, uh, even in the coaching profession, that don't really realize how much time and investment it takes uh, if you're going to do it right. And uh, and I and I we don't have a ton of coaches meetings. Uh, we don't do a lot of wasted sitting around. But it's uh, you know. 12-hour days are kind of the minimum right now. So, uh, you know, when you're people say, yeah, yeah, we work 60, 70, 80 hours a week, but you work 80 hours a week for 10 straight weeks, most people never work really truly work 80 hours a week. Uh, but when you're in this position, you do. And uh, when you're doing it for 10, 12 consecutive weeks, it, it takes a toll on you mentally, physically. Uh, but but uh, I love it. I still love it. I still enjoy everything about it. Uh you know, obviously you have frustrations when you come up short, but uh, it's supposed to be about the relationships and, and the things that the game teaches. And, and I I have learned a long time ago that uh, it's got to be more than the winning and losing. But, uh, you know, like Sunday we had a mother's brunch where I brought all my seniors in and they uh, eat brunch with me and their moms and they all get up and they share – uh, a little bit about their mom, and they just kind of give words of affirmation. And uh, that's really you know, cool, man. That's really oh, cool. it's awesome. Yeah, I didn't, you know, uh, I didn't start doing that until 2017. But it is by far the most powerful thing that we have in our program. So uh, to sit there and see a 17, 18 year old boy get up and uh, and thank his mom and for all the support that she's given him, and uh, you know, just all the things that everybody wants to say, but sometimes you're never challenged to do, uh, and uh, stuff like that. I mean, you know, the uh, the state championships, the region championships, the winning and losing. I mean, the people that are in it, they care. I mean, the people that like really love high school football, but most people they don't give a crap. They could, they don't know if you're winning on Friday or if you lost and you're picking your stuff up. Most of them don't. And, uh, but you're supposed to be, you know, uh, watering the bamboo, so to speak. And, you know, supposed to be bearing the fruit that, you know, uh, you, you just, you got to do something bigger. And so, uh, I try to do my little part. I know our coaches on our staff try to do their part. And, uh, you know, I know we have a lot of coaches in this state that do a tremendous job of doing that, but you just find so much more joy when you, uh, I don't really, uh, I don't know if Saban's talking about that per se when he talks about focus on, uh, you, you don't focus on the winning. You know, you got to focus on doing things right, having discipline and being structured and being smart, uh, trying to be the best version of yourself, all that stuff that we a lot of times hear as coach speak and is we're kind of inundated, you know, like it's just overwhelming to us now with all the social media outlets. It really still holds true and uh, you know, the way football is played, even though it's different looking, it's still the same. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be fundamentally sound. You gotta block well. You gotta tackle people. You gotta get lined up right. I mean, the stuff that Gary taught me 22 years ago still remains the same. I mean, the game looks a little bit different, but it's really not that much different. So, uh, you know, it's, it, but, but, but again, with that, you gotta, you got to be building, uh, you know, boys and a young man through the game of football, and, and uh, I'm just fortunate to get to the place that I love to go to work at every day. Well, and you talked about it, 22 years. Think about all the young men uh, that you, you you come home or or you it's after a football game, or you come back to Murfreesboro, and you know you're you're at an establishment, you're getting something to eat in this town or something, and some Oakland Patriot comes up to you and says, "Coach, do you remember me? I'm I'm married now. I got two kids and this, and I work at so and so. I graduated from so and so, and I'm I'm do-, and you're like you you are totally blown away. You hadn't seen this kid in forever, but you coached him somewhere. I mean, people have no idea." How great it is, even you know, for even for me as a, 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 I guess a wildcat announcer that goes out and does football. You know that when pe- you know kids say thank you so much for putting my highlight videos up or or putting you know and do and being there and being on Friday night, people have no idea that that it, that that gratification of you reaching down and helping a young man and, and giving them. Uh, uh, you know, new life that people have no idea what that does. That leads to bigger things later on in their life, and, and it's great to be a part of. Yeah, and I think I mean, uh, 
again, you just get you get you are who you're around, and so like whether it's coaching to me, coaching and teaching is the same thing. And uh, obviously, you get to be more energetic and coaching. You get to be a little bit more aggressive. You get to be a little bit co- more colorful with the way you explain things at times. But if you're if you're a really good teacher, you're probably going to be a good coach. Uh, if you if you're a really you know if you're a really bad teacher, you're probably not as good a coach as you think you are. But uh, it's it's about the the kids. Like you're coaching kids. You're coaching. You're teaching kids in class. I'm not teaching British literature. I'm uh, I'm teaching kids. It's about connecting with them, building relationships, asking them how they're doing, making sure they're in the right mental space. And uh, I learned that, you know, again from being around really good people early on. And uh, I had a lot of. At one time, I had a lot of. Uh, I don't know what the right word is, but uh, when I was younger and dumber, and uh, I had, I guess, I had a lot of uh, resentment toward. Uh, Riverdale and Tom Nolan just because when I left I went to Oakland and blah 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 but uh, you know I got to work for a principal with Tom Nolan that genuinely loved his kids and I mean Absolutely. you know he was he, yeah he was awesome at creating a culture at the school that made kids want to be there so uh, that's that's what it, that's what it's all about and, and uh, so I've just I've been around like I said, I've been around a lot of great leaders, and uh, you know, try to learn from all of them. But but uh, you got it's about the relationships, it's about the, the kids, and uh, that's way more important than the winning. Oh gosh, yeah, you couldn't have said it better, Coach McDaniel, and I, that's the reason why I love having you on this show. I mean, you tell it like it is. I was telling that I just yesterday. I don't know coach, how the hell we got to that point, but but it, I I'm will sorry. say this though: yesterday I was talking to Ty Guard, and I said to him, I said, no matter what, when Coach McDaniel gets where he's in that man, I don't say anything. He just he runs the show. He's going to tell me what he's going to tell me, and it <laughs> comes it comes <laughs> off as something just fabulous man i love it i wouldn't have it any other way i wouldn't i wouldn't want it any other way because it's it's your time and i just enjoy hearing you talk about because people just have no idea how difficult it is doing what you guys do it is not easy coaching high school football because no it's it's not and i mean you know we got off the bus friday we had a we had a little uh we we had a little issue uh on the interstate one of the buses broke down and uh, we had to, we literally had to pull off on the interstate. One of my coaches was like, "Well, this is the first. And I was thinking, "Well, it wasn't the first for me. I remember uh, we went to Independence one year. I believe it was 2011 or 2012. And we got stuck on 840, and uh, and I remember we drove to Raven one one time and got stuck underneath a bridge. Yeah, I remember we, that. Know, uh, so anyway, but what I was getting at is, uh, but we didn't handle it very well. And so my older kids were kind of. Uh, they weren't being as professional as I would have liked when we had all that transition. And when we got to Central, you know, they got read the Riot Act. And anybody that, uh, that's that been around me knows that there, there can be moments of high tension when things are not going the way they're supposed to. And I don't like doing that. I don't too much enjoy it. But part of my message to them was, like, this is your team. You're, the 2022's got my name next to it. But, but – uh, I'm going to be fired. I mean, uh, you know, winning or losing aside, uh, this is your team, and uh, you, you're you the one that invested all this time, energy, and effort, and, you know, you're, going to, you're not going to go out and play well uh, because you're not in the right headspace or you're not focused or whatever. So it's just, man, everything's immediate gratification. Everything's like what is right now in the moment, and, and they, they forget about all – they do at times. I don't beat it as a negative, but they forget about all the time and investment they put – into 48 minutes and you get 10 of them, you better take full advantage of them because, uh, you know, when they're gone, as you know, uh, a lot of people like to play uh, whatever, uh, men's softball after they get out of high school or college. A lot of guys like to play flag football. A lot of guys like to play church league basketball. You ain't put the helmet on again. It ain't going to happen for most people. And so it's just a finite amount of time. And you better you better take advantage of it because most kids you've been around enough of to know man when it's over it's abrupt it's pretty cruel and inhumane you're in that helmet in that locker room you smell that shoulder pad all the time and then it's gone and you ain't never getting it back so while you have it you better enjoy it you couldn't have said it better because it does and you know we talk about it you know the time is short 
Uh, yeah, I mean, if you if if you're coaching here at uh, if you like when you were coaching at Oakland, you knew that if that kid if he comes in as a freshman, he's got two two times at Riverdale and two times at Oakland. He only has for the Battle of the Borough. They're only going to play here twice, and we're going to go over there twice. That's it. It's not basketball. We don't go back and forth during the same season. And in, in, in a snap of a finger, just like you said, it's over and you realize uh, the band, they're not here. Like if you go on and you go over to, and I'm not beating a, a, a Cumberland up or a Lindsey Wilson, but one of the smaller schools close here to Nashville, and, and you think college football, oh, I'll go over there, I'm going to continue my next level of college football. It is not the same thing you just left where all of you come in and it's 2,500 students or whatever your student body, and everybody parks in the parking lot, and, and it's this different world. It's, it changes, doesn't it, Coach? I mean, it is totally it, do, it does change. It does change, but, like, when I have kids, any kid, that, I've got one playing at Birmingham Southern right now that's a freshman, and I could have told you, he loved it. He loves it. And so when you have the ability to go to a Cumberland or you have the right. ability to go to, uh, you know, a, a Birmingham Southern if you have the right academics and if you are in love with football, then that is such a great opportunity. Absolutely. To have a college experience and you still get to play the game you love so much. Unfortunately, too many of the guys are like, oh, I really love it. And, you know, they don't love it. They like it. I liked a lot of girls, uh, you know, but uh, I only love one. Uh, that's just the way it is. And so I love football for so many reasons. Friday nights are sacred, and they are beautiful and awesome and memorable and all that stuff. But it's all the other things, the work that goes into it, the relationships you build, to see a kid have something click at practice. And just coaching fundamentals, like just being in the game, it's just such an awesome thing. It's one of the hardest, it's one of the hardest things that a kid can do anymore, and I don't really think there's any way to quote-unquote make it easy. And so, uh, you know, we got to be smarter about the way we do things, but at the end of the day, it's a hard sport, man. And uh, you got to be outside. It's hot. you got to put a lot of equipment on and you got to physically run full speed into somebody else and, and, and do something play in and play out that when you're 19 years old, if you did something similar, you'd be arrested for assault. So, uh, you know, you, again, there's a beauty in that, and I'm not trying to sound like a complete no, meathead, but no. there is, you know, there's a beauty in that that, that is uh, very, you know, limited. And, uh, you know, I just try to make sure our kids know that, you know, the, every day is a blessing. We got it great. And you just better take advantage of all your two uh, your opportunities because I, I I've done it enough now to know that like man it is so so just uh, sobering when it's over it's like golly man where'd it go it just felt like yesterday that Ashton Struther was my quarterback and he's not now and Jack McGough was my quarterback and he's doing great but I'm gonna look up at, you know in a couple weeks and he's not gonna be my quarterback either so it just you know you you spend so much time every day at practice. Play to get you know on the field on Friday nights, film on Sunday, you know all these things, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's disconnect, and it's just you build these relationships that you're literally with each other for days on end without breaks, and then all of a sudden it's cut off. So it's just a it's a weird thing. I love it, but it's also can be very frustrating. But it it is what it is. We're setting at five, and uh, you, you know you're setting at five and four. <laughs> Uh, I'm uh, rambling. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. That's uh, that's the reason why I love having you on the show. It, it, classic episode, as I say. You're uh, you're sitting at five and four and uh, one and three in the region, but uh, you're gonna catch St. Benedict. That's two and seven. Talk about where you are and what you got to do, Coach. Here as uh, uh, as we as we continue yeah. on with season two, 2022. We are uh, we are uh, exactly where we were last year. Uh, we're healthier right now probably than we ever have been for the whole season. Uh, you know, still have yet to play a complete game, which is frustrating, but ultimately that's my fault. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we need to win our final region game of the regular season. It's at home. It's senior night. And it puts us in the fourth slot knowing that we're going to play Box Catholic, who has to come to us and instead of us having to drive six hours like we had to go there last year. So, you know, there's a lot of positives to be had. We have an opportunity to play in our home stadium again. Yep. A lot of kids, as you well know, after at, at, after their 10th game, they don't have that luxury. We have that. And uh, so we need to play well Friday. 
we need to, you know, continue to improve in, in, in some areas. We did we did a lot of good things uh, last Friday night, uh, but uh, you know, it, it, it it's, we got to continue to build on that, and uh, you know, yeah, just kind of see uh, where we are. I know that uh, you know that as you get to the playoffs in this league, it uh, you know it's not for the faint at heart, and uh, you know wh- wh- whatever it is, we're, we're lucky to get to play again. And we're we're lucky to get to play at home, and we'll have to play extremely well. You just, I mean, you know what our league looks oh, like. Oh God, it's league, ugly. It, it is, is yeah, ugly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, p- yeah. pass level, pass level two. Like after you, if you can, it, you know, you get past Knox Catholic, it's a train wreck from then on out. I mean, it is just brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the top eight. Yeah, the top eight, whatever year, but. But it's just, I mean. But it's a great uh, league. I mean, why would you? Hey, hey, you did awesome. you did not leave anything different than where you are now. Had you been over to Oakland, you're coaching in the SEC of six A, and you go yeah, over, right. you know, and you go over to Memphis, and you're at Christian Brothers. Well, you're coaching in the upper level of private sector, but I mean, all of them are dead gone mean and lean and they all can win and and, and just thank goodness lips come in and you're you know i mean they're, they're all good i mean you know cpa coach rankin's got to play cpa well i mean yeah. that you already know what the ending story is there so i mean you no know. It's, it's it's just it's a it's a it's a very high level of football and uh so anyway we uh we're, we're fortunate that we kind of get to still our you know still our own fate and that we get to play uh our final game regular season game at home Hopefully, send our seniors out on a very strong uh, note of the regular season, and then ultimately we'll get to play a playoff game at home. So uh, you know, we've got a lot of positives to look at, yep. and uh, you know, once you get the playoffs in this league, you just never know. There's there's a uh, there's just a lot of there's not a lot of disparity between uh, you know a lot of our teams in, in, in league play. So uh, anything can happen, as you know, once you get to the playoffs, and and it should be fun. Well, I, I wish she was. Uh, I wish she was with us Friday night. We're going over to Reservation. It's a. Uh, I got. I got Riverdale and Stewart's Creek. It's win. They're both. They both. I mean, you know, win. You're in. Lose. You go home. So. I oh mean, really? Oh heck yeah! We got a thriller. For both Friday. of them. Yes. 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 Wow. So I've got a real good one, and I got Ben Coddell coming up here after a while, but. Uh, uh, really, uh, and he talks about coaching under you and everything. He's got a he's got a big one against uh, Will Kreisky on uh, Friday night at the reservation. So uh, both of them have to win to get in. Yep, uh, yep, yep. And good place to play a football game, man. Oh, great, great. And listen to this. Yeah. Good. Throw the TP up sometime. Oh, they did repair it. It's funny you mentioned that. They got it back up oh, for the back. It got on fire at one point, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. And I think one of the football coaches got online. You'll have to ask around. But they got online and figured out how to build a teepee just for the Battle of the Borough. And the thing was up uh, uh, at Riverdale. It, they've got a teepee up. They had it for the Battle hey, of the what Borough. Hey, about, what, what about this right there on uh, 231? Yeah, was that used to be – was that WTs? Is that what that was called? That gas station? Am I making that up? It may have been. Uh, no, nah, what WTs was it? Uh, anyway, there was a gas station right across the street from. Uh, it's now that big, deep, uh, big uh, gas station, but there was a little gas station right there, right across from Walgreens. And uh, I swear I thought it was WTs, but anyway, uh, when I was super young, uh, we painted a lot of field on Thursday night, and uh, somebody have to drive over and pick up hamburgers and. Uh, Coach Frank had never painted. He always drove around in a golf cart, and he would bring us uh, sodas and stuff like that. But I never saw him pick up a paint wand. Uh, <laughs> but we'd sit there and paint that field, and man, what a – you talk about some labor. Uh, uh, but it a, lot was. Of good, a lot of good memories. Oh, and, and you know what? You wouldn't trade any of those – Late Thursday nights, getting ready, and uh, and, and all the good fun you had, and uh, and growing up and learning about the game. I mean, uh, it, it's taught you a lot, hasn't it, Coach? Oh yeah, and Riverdale's a, a awesome place to play. Some some super highs and some low of the lows uh, that I've had uh, at that place. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a, that'll be a great environment Friday, I'm sure. Coach, good luck Friday night, and I hope to see you around over the holidays or something. All right, Stork. Love you, brother. See you, bye.